Hey everyone, uh, recently I released a video stating my top 10 PS1 games, so I decided to release another. This one being my all-time favorite original Nintendo games. Now, I was born in 1986, so this is straight from my childhood, as a lot of these games were released in the 80s and early 90s. Hopefully my memory is reliable enough since I can't even remember last Christmas. But to my family and friends, I was considered a Nintendo master. The NES system had a reputation for instability, and getting games to work sometimes was considered a challenge in itself. You had to own a game cleaning kit, and there were so many different methods to get the games to work. From blowing into the cartridges, rolling spit around to the inside, to rocking the cartridges back and forth when it was actually in the system. I always got the games to work, and people would come to me at family get-togethers to get it working. It's amazing our systems lasted as long as they did, with all the abuse that they had been through. Anyway, here we go. Number 10, Super Dodgeball. This game actually hid from me for several years. When I was younger, I got to play it for only an evening at a friend's house, but I could never find it whenever I went shopping. It wasn't until my teens that I found this game at a garage sale. It prompted me to dust off the old NES and relive my youth. Although glitchy as hell, it's one of those games that will make you feel better when you just have that feeling of wanting to run someone over. I know Mortal Kombat was the start of the great ESRB wars, but I find it funny that no one had an issue with people dying by dodgeball in this game. Number 9, the original Zelda. Fan favorite, I think I would be shot if this game wasn't on this list. The general expansiveness in this game is what caught my interest. Being in an open world game, there was no hand holding, and when I was younger, I would just run around and get lost killing as many things as possible. Whenever I would actually advance in storyline or find a secret, that made the experience all the more sweeter since I had no idea what the hell I was doing or where I should go. No strategy guide or help here. The four-way force and maze was torture. Number 8, Batman. I'll be honest, for a while I just played this game for the music. I never really had to go past the first level since Streets of Desolation was just so epic. It wasn't until I really forced myself to sit down and concentrate on playing that I actually started to appreciate this game for the actual gameplay. I wasn't really that into the Batman universe until Christopher Nolan's trilogy, but that didn't really prevent me from enjoying this at a younger age. Number 7, Nintendo World Cup Soccer. I've put hours into this game. I could describe what every country special cook looks like and the two secret ones that not many people know about. I spent so much time figuring this game out and tinkering with the actual gameplay system, trying to create the longest goals from the specific angles how to just run the ball in, how to knock out as many opposing players as possible with one super kick. My only gripe was that the periods were just too damn long. You can make a 20 no relatively easy once you knew what you were doing. The ice field level on Versus was just so much fun, and this was the first game I ever played uh, with four people at once. Rescue Embassy Mission. One of my brother's favorite games that I inherited. It was a fun game that had different challenge levels depending on how much of a pain in the ass you want to make it. From slinking around from the spotlights, to sniping the bad guys through the windows, to repelling down the side of the building to break it and clear it out, this game had a lot of different elements working for it. I 
really loved the last part of the game where you had to run around and directly shoot the bad guys. It was a first person shooter before the concepts rise through Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake. Number 5, RBI Baseball 2. Another one of my brother's games. He was a pretty big baseball fan, so I found myself playing this one a lot with him. Uh, this favorite of mine is more for the memories than the actual gameplay. Uh, it was a pretty simple and basic baseball game. I'm sure you people have seen uh, the very first one with the stubby sprites and bars in arcades. Uh, the entire game focuses on hitting grounders to load the bases and then aiming for home runs when the batter has a high home run count. That's pretty much it, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. Super Spike Volleyball. I first saw this game played by my cousins when they were trying to beat it on co-op. Uh, my grandmother had an NES at her house from when she had a daycare, and my cousins and I would rally around it during family get-togethers. This game came with Nintendo World Cup Soccer, so you can see why they are both on my list. Uh, a lot of fond memories with this one, uh, playing with my family and friends, and it had just one great soundtrack. Uh, playing as the muscle-bound pair was considered cheating. Number 3, Bucky O'Hare. Honestly, this might be my very first game purchased for me instead of a hand-me-down from my brothers or something played with family and friends. I don't know why I had to have this game, and I think my parents bought it for me at a grocery store back when you could rent games and VH tapes there. Regardless, it was amazing to me. Uh, the fantasy world presented in the game just captured me in my youth, and I couldn't help but play it over and over again. The music was just amazing. Number 2, Rampage. This game actually belonged to a friend of mine back in daycare when I was little. He brought it with him and we played all the time at my grandmother's house. I love this game so much that I at first convinced him to leave it there for everyone else to play and then to let me take it home and just hope he would never ask for it back. It didn't work, but uh, you know, I, I had to give it a shot. A very simple game with no storyline, getting to play as the bad guy was just riveting. I got to destroy buildings and eat people. One time my brother and I spent hours trying to beat it, but we had to go to dinner on the very last level. We turned off the TV and left the system on and hoped to continue when we got back. Lo and behold, we returned to a yellow screen and lost everything. Gotta love the NES. Number 1, Mega Man 3. This game had both memories and the fact that, in my opinion, it was the best in this entire series. A game that I took up after watching my brothers play constantly, I sucked at it at a younger age, especially when getting to the secondary bosses for Mega Man 2 after being the first set of Robot Masters. But after I figured out a couple of cheats, I just couldn't be stopped, until the boss fights against Wily. There was a cheat that where if you press and hold right on the D-pad of the second player's controller, if Mega Man fell into a pit and an enemy flies over or onto you while you're in the pit, you lost all your health but could still play. The music would shut off and you could jump super high and take infinite damage, but if you ever picked up health then you became killable again. When I couldn't use tape, I had this little red chair that I'd sit on and play games. I would put the second player controller underneath one of my chair's legs and try not to move as I played. That's it, that's my top 10 list of NES games. If you want to share your own personal list, don't hesitate to list them in the comment section below.